With just weeks left before it is scheduled to go on active duty, the F-35, a supersonic jet fighter that can do this, landed aboard the USS Wasp for sea trials. Marine Major Brendan Walsh has been flying the F-35 for three years, but not until now from a ship. You don't have much time if something goes wrong, so you have to make sure that everything's going well with the airplane. And how many feet uh, does it take for it to become airborne? We were taking off in as little as 350 feet. The Marines plan to buy 420 F-35s, but just getting the first squadron of 10 ready to go on time would mark a major milestone for this most complex of aircraft, which runs on 24 million lines of software code. It would take us 30 minutes sometimes with shutdowns, restarts, just to get the airplane airborne due to just various software glitches. Major Eric Lieberman says those glitches have been fixed. I mean, nowadays, uh, we're up and ready with the aircraft in 10 minutes. But that half million dollar helmet, which displays all the data the pilot needs on his visor, still does not work well at night. And when we arrived aboard the Wasp, some 400 miles off the coast of North Carolina, only two of the six F-35s were ready to fly. What's the readiness rate been so far out here? It's been a little bit less than we'd expect. Tools and spare parts were flown in and the aircraft were soon repaired. But over a two week period, 15 missions had to be canceled because of maintenance problems. 106 missions went off as scheduled. You're down to crunch time. We are. Lieutenant General John Davis, Chief of Marine Corps Aviation, has been shuttling back and forth between the Pentagon and the WASP. He is the man who has to make the decision. Is the F-35, the most expensive weapon system ever built, ready to join the fleet? And if you don't pull it off, we'll pull it off, sir. We'll pull it off. Right now, it comes down to this. Can the F-35 fly a mission, land on a ship, and be ready to take off again within two hours? day after day. David Martin, CBS News, aboard the USS Watson.